In this case, it does. We may learn that it does not, in which case we say, great, we're in pretty good shape. But if we go beyond that resource capacity, is there a way we can apply something like conservation to reduce demand to allow us to extend that resource out a little bit further? Um, if there still isn't the ability to meet those needs, is there a way we can increase the capacity of that resource by managing and conjunctive with some of those words that we talked about? Has any way been identified other than natural to recharge these aquifers that are complete? Yes. There are a number of places that have done what they call aquifer storage and recovery. Um, I don't know how much has been really piloted here in this state, but it's been done in a number of different states pretty effectively. Especially alluvial aquifer systems. Alluvial aquifer systems have a lot of transmissivity, so they're much easier to be able to recharge. There's a lot of technical issues around uh, unintended consequences in terms of the suitability of the water going in, the source of the injection water, and any uh, geochemical, uh, rea undesirable reactions between that source of water and the native water. So there are some, some technical issues that have to be dealt with, but it's been, it's been a very viable solution in a number of states. And that's a great example the gentleman was raising is, is there a way you could increase the capacity by taking and conjunctively managing surface water and groundwater? Down about somewhere around sea level, I've heard there's something called the St. Peter Sandstone that some people I know drilled into. That's, you know, going down 1,000, 1,200 feet. And I, I understood this kind of continuation of overall aquifer that just we don't have a, a, a uniform someplace down there, an aquifer that just runs all over the state? My no. understanding, I'm not the geologist here, but the answer is no. <laughs> we have a series of different aquifers, but not one that covers the whole thing. So some places you go all the way to China, there's nothing, no water. Not much. Not necessarily. <laughs> Maybe not suitable water. There's a lot of water in our area. You go down there, the salt water came in from not from freshwater sources, but from salt water sources. You know, when it used to be ocean. We're getting close, so I'm going to try to wrap up. You've seen most of what these are just some illustrations down to show you graphically a lot of the words that you've heard from each night. I appreciate your patience and your excellent questions. So no matter what we come up with, I think at the end of the day, what we want to convey to you is none of us think we have all the answers right now. Um, what we can tell you is we don't think a single solution is going to work. Never really seen where you say, yeah, there's, here's the one that's going to do that. More likely, what's going to be doing is taking a combination of those existing plans, like we're talking about Grand Prairie, I think you're describing it, moving those forward, making those successful because that's what's essential to meet that forecast need. So highlighting those existing plans and saying those have to move forward. Um, looking at any additional information we have on other projects that might, that need to move, might need to move forward based on ones that are on the drawing boards of individual providers, really elevating their importance. And then to develop alternatives where we may not have any existing solutions. So you're kind of combining those. <coughs> And, you're, and we're kind of describing that you put them together in, in terms of a series of different kinds of things. So at the end of the day, you'll have a number of different solutions, short-term, long-term, mid-term, and then ones that if they're not successful, you have some contingency planning, so you're not uh, you know, kind of resting on one, one potential solution that may not um, be successful. And then the idea is that it does take time, and we're planning for four years. We're not going to solve it in two years. So this is just a graphic showing that you implement those short-term strategies, you evaluate that progress, you add additional strategies if they're not moving forward, and you do a continual improvement process, an adaptive process, to make sure that you're continuing to implement those programs and projects to meet that 40-year forecast. Because it will be, some of these solutions will take many, many years uh, probably to implement. And, and the dollars have to be planned for and, and the pain. Um, so we want to identify at the end of the day an ongoing implementation process. Answer what we can today, but also be looking for the long term. Um, 
itself. You've already hit on a lot of these additional questions. Um, I'm going to come back to these in just a second, and we're going to spend a little bit more time visiting. I think we're right at about eight. So um, <coughs> you're going to stick around however long you want to, but I'm conscious of your, your schedule. We'll be around as long as you want us to. But if, if you want to talk about a few more of these questions or in, um, issues, um, stick around. Uh, we can do that one-on-one, -on -one, but I'll give you a chance before we wrap up. Um, and be thinking about those issues from these different kinds of perspectives, um, probably social, technical, economic, environmental, and political legal issues that you're concerned about. Um, but I want to make sure I get this up here. It is on your fact sheet. It's on this. So make sure you have this. But this is just a way that you can stay involved by going to the Water Plan website at arwaterplan.arkansas.gov. And you can also visit the ANRC website at anrc.arkansas.gov. Those are both great resources for you to follow. You can also email us to arkansaswater at cdmsmith.com. So if things come up as you're driving home or you think about them tomorrow, you can send us an email. We check that um, continually through the next coming couple of years. Um, so it's a way that we can respond, make sure we get to your questions and answer those questions. So those are great ways electronically you can get to us. We know not everybody. Yes, sir. Just one quick question, and, and I've, I've got around, I didn't realize the time. But this is the Arkansas Water Plan, and uh, I understand this legislation or, or working towards the plan for Arkansas, but the uh, you know, the watersheds and, and probably the aquifers definitely don't follow the Arkansas state line. So at that point, how much coordination, at least with suggestion and such, do you have with the neighboring states? Great question. And we've talked a little bit about that. Uh, I know particularly in the case of Louisiana, there's been some questions they've had in terms of just how the reporting of the water use between the states is occurring. So we do intend to have some dialogue at least with the states that we have contact with. Um, beyond that, I can't give you a, an accurate answer, but it's a great point to get some thoughts here. So Ken, great. Sure. Uh, uh, at the staff level, we work with the staff of our neighboring states, and Oklahoma has just gone through a, you know, a significant water plan update. Uh, Missouri is, is looking at, uh, well, they've done a recent update, but are looking to do some more. Uh, I'm not sure about Louisiana, but uh, we do communicate with our peers there. So during this process, we will be communicating with them, the planning and what type of, of uh, information that we're getting into the planning process and we'll be asking them for information any information that they have related to say aquifers uh any of the surface waters that are crossing our boundaries from other states or uh in the case of louisiana surface water water that's leaving the state and going into louisiana that they will on the flip side have great interest in what we're doing on our water tank updates so that communication will take place. I just don't have any specifics because we haven't gotten far enough in the, the technical issues yet, or the technical planning, to have specifics of what information we've pulled from them, what assumptions have been made in that way.